Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today what I am going to explain is about the turbocharged gasoline direct injection or TGDA engines. In the new era, we are able to produce the power of a 2 liter engine even in a 1.2 or 1.3 liter engine. It is by combining the GDA with turbocharger. And today, what I am going to say is about how it is possible and what are the advantages of this and how we can ma make more power from a small downsized engine or about the engine downsizing. So let's look at it. This diagram shows how a forced induction system is attached to a four cylinder engine. Here we are using a turbocharger. In this diagram we can see two color of arrows. One is the blue and other is the red. The blue arrow shows that the, it is the fresh charge or the fresh air that is going inside the combustion chamber to take part in the combustion. You can see the turbocharger where there is two part. One is the compressor and the second one is the turbine. The turbine is situated in the exhaust side and the compressor is situated in the intake side. The turbine converts the enthalpy and kinetic energy of the gas into mechanical energy to rotate the compressor and this compressor increases the pressure of that first charge which means the density of the first charge will be increased and we can use the denser charge for injecting more fuel and producing more power but before that the pressurization of the fresh charge will increase pressure as well as temperature so we have to reduce the temperature so it will be first move to an intercooler to reduce the temperature to an optimum level for combustion this cooling process is done to reduce the possibilities of knocking inside the combustion chamber knocking is an unwanted phenomena which will damage the engine so we have to prevent knocking to make the engine more reliable and to increase the lifespan of the engine diagram you have already noticed that air bypass valve in the intake section to control the pressure in the intake manifold to maintain it in the optimal level for better engine performance. The waste gate valve in the exhaust side is used to maintain the turbine efficiency as well as to reduce the back pressure in the exhaust side. And the EGR or exhaust gas recirculation valve is used to control the nitrogen oxide emission of the engine to maintain it in an economic way. Let's check the effect of engine downsizing. Let's consider two square engines. One having a stroke of 50 mm and bore of 50 mm. The other one have the stroke and bore of 60 mm. So uh, in the first case, the, uh, in the small engine, the displacement will be 98.2 cm cube and in the big engine, um, the displacement will be 169.64 cm cube. And uh, it's a simple logic that the rubbing area of the small engine will be way less. If we calculated that, the, uh, the rubbing area of the small engine will be 78.54 cm square and the big engine will be 113.1 cm square. And the rubbing area will be directly proportional to the rubbing loss. So, in this case, the small engine will have lesser friction losses and the big engine will have higher friction losses. It is true that the friction uh, is not dependent on the surface area of contact, but the rubbing losses are largely proportional to rubbing area. And the mass of the components of the small engine will be very less compared to the uh, mass of the components in the big engine. So, a uh, smaller mass means uh, that there will be very less inertia effects so we can run the engine more fast more fast means uh, we can pull it the graph shows the fuel conversion efficiency of a spark ignition engine at a constant rpm which is the 2000 rpm in this figure at various engine loads the indicated power is lost by the pumping loss and friction loss and finally we will get the brake power or brake horsepower Public loss is the power that is taken to let the air in during the suction stroke and to push the exhaust gases out from the combustion chamber. Friction losses can be reduced by engine downsizing as I already said in the previous section. 
so these are the losses that is taken part uh, in an engine in a in an internal combustion engine actually the preferred operating range uh, to get the optimum brake power uh, is shown in the graph we have shows the cylinder pressure that is created at various engine speed which means that the engine speed increases as the engine speed increases uh, the cylinder pressure is also increased it will lead to the charge temperature rise and uh, consequently uh, it will lead to detonation in spark ignition engine and will cause no other major advantages of a CGD or turbocharged gas or direct injection systems are we can induce the volume reductions. This has happened because um, the fuel is directly injected into the combustion chamber, so uh, we, uh, we are ta- uh, taking only the fresh air, not air fuel mixture. So the entire volume um, in the intake part will be taken up by the air, um, not by fuel. So we will get higher volume efficiency. And second one is we, uh, the direct injection will provide a cooling effect to the fresh air, which means uh, the uh, vaporization of fuel will reduce the temperature of air in it. Also, um, the air, final air fuel mixture temperature will be low compared to the uh, multi cooling injection system, which means uh, we can uh, reduce the probability of getting rise of the temperature to auto ignition temperature of the acid which will lead to detonation or knocking so the probability of knocking will get very so we can provide more boosting to the engine and produce more power and the third thing is actually we can reduce the pumping loss the downsides engine will always run in wide open throttle which means uh, the pump load operation will get reduced and pumping losses will also be reduced. These are the main three advantages, but there are also disadvantages. What are the disadvantages? Is, uh, in very high speed, uh, we know that uh, some some of most of the hypercars are adopting MPA plus G days because there will be port injection as well as direct injection. It is because uh, in, uh, at very high speeds, the injection system won't get that much time for mixing air fuel mixture in that injection because uh, the uh, injection strategy is adopted in, uh, du- uh, during suction stroke or combustion, uh, combustion stroke which means there will be not enough time but um, M- if you use MPA uh, we will get a homogeneous mixture at very high speeds that's why some engines are adopting MPA plus GDA combining the advantages of forced induction plus the advantages of direct injection we will get a result that is shown in this figure compared to multi-point injection the gas on direct injection engines with turbocharger will be able to provide higher torque at lower rpm and it will be able to maintain the peak torque for a large speed range and we will be able to accelerate more quickly Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We will meet you in another video. Thank you.